You're listening to the God Stories Radio Podcast with Fritz, Mike, and Tina, bringing hope, comfort, and encouragement through the power of the Christian testimony. Listen live on the Mixler app and follow us on your favorite platform, including iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Radio.com. Stay connected with us on Facebook and Twitter at God Stories Radio. God Stories Radio. This is session 258. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. And I'm Tina. What's going on? It's Thursday night. It's Thursday. Ooh, wow. <laughs> How's everybody up in here? Up in here? How was your week? His week, I will speak, um, was That's why I'm quite asking. grand. Because he actually had some vacation time and yes. he got to enjoy being off and not working. And I think that he really enjoyed not having to have an agenda every single day. He really did enjoy not <laughs> having an agenda. That's true. What's up, Mikey? It's Thursday night. Well, I know that. What else is going on? So you got your stuff. tablet, you're loaded with notes? Well, no, I'm just... Right. You've been off today, done lots of thinking? Lord's been talking to you? Give us some words. Words? Um, no, I'm just uh, in, a, in a position where uh, I'm toying with to retire or not to retire. And that, that is, is the, the question. question. <laughs> and um, I look at the numbers and it's almost like $300 difference between now and next year. So I think I'm going to move on, continue to work for another year. Well, all right. How about you, babe? What's going on? It's very busy. So I'm looking forward to actually decompressing and just having a grand old time on the show. Well, that's fabulous. We're going to have nothing less than a grand old time on the show because we got two grand old dudes right in here from the Battle Podcast. We have Mr. Ray. Ray all day in the full Monty Johnny. Hey, hey what's, what's going on, guys? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who speak English, that would be Ray Flannery <laughs> and John Durham. <laughs> Welcome, guys. <laughs> well, the last time we were on the show, you asked me if I had a handle, and I, I guess I got one now. It's full, uh, it's full Monty Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> we sent so. it out for a vote, and it all came back. <laughs> all back in the full Monty. That's yep. it. Wow. It was unanimously decided. By the audience. Well, you know, I'm one of them guys, what you see is what you get, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it fits. So I'll take it. That's great. I love it. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's going on over at the Battle Podcast? Um, give us, kind of give us an update. What are you guys doing? Oh, man. We are episode 24, right? We just dropped episode 24. We've got a couple more that are going to be being lined up. And then over the next couple of weeks, uh, We've had a few new countries that came online in the last couple of weeks as well. I mean, we, we've got Brazil listening to us. We have Ireland. We've got, we got one Aussie in Australia. Good eye, Mike. Good eye, Mike. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Poland and the Czech Republic. Uh, Turkey. Indonesia. Turkey, Indonesia. Yeah. So Alaska, Brazil. So yeah. <laughs> in Alaska. What is with Ray in Alaska? You know, Ray thinks that Alaska is a country unto itself. It's the blue cowboy it's like, state. Bro, it, it's, it's America. The, fro- the frozen America. cowboy. But so we're excited. We've we've picked up a, a few listeners, and we're we're trying to find ways to get our our uh, our name out there through advertising, and we're we're doing things through Facebook, and we're actually looking at going live, Facebook Live, and, and Instagram Live, and and just 
letting people look at our ugly mugs and listen to what we have to say. I think it's a good plan, guys. You know, I think that your audience will engage with you even more, you know, when when they can see you and connect with you. So I think it's great. Yeah, well, they'll be looking and saying, yeah, that guy. Yeah, he is the one chasing ice cream trucks. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That'll be him. Yeah, that'd be me. <laughs> so, so what has been one of the most surprising things for you guys um, since you started podcasting? Mine is how much it's changed. What we thought we wanted. So the vision. Yeah. Well, the vision has been the same, Mm -hmm. but the way we've gone about the vision, uh, we realized at the very beginning that we were very, I'd almost say kind of shackled. You know, we thought we were doing what we wanted and then went back and listened to it. And John's wife also listened to it and said, no, this is very very watered down, which is what we didn't want. We wanted to be very real, very transparent. Mm-hmm. Um, full Monty Johnny. Yeah. I mean, when you're, when your wife tells you that you're not being aggressive enough, I mean, that, mm-hmm. that hurts a little bit, but you uh-huh. know, it was a great, well, she wake- knows you. That's yeah. Why. It was a great wake up call. Yeah. It really made us step back and, and, and think, okay, what are we trying to do? What kind of a message are we trying to send out there to our listeners? And we had to come to the realization, you know, we're not necessarily a Christian podcast. We are a men's podcast that happens to be being led by three Christian men. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, four now that we got the Mainer involved. The Mainer. Who handles our social media p- mm-hmm. platforms and things. But we had to really, we wrestled that and had to think, okay, well, what message are we trying to get out there to the men that are listening to us? And we didn't want to, you know, exclude anybody from uh, from our from the message we were trying to send, because we didn't want to say, well, this is only for Christian men. You know, mm-hmm. this is right. for all men. And so it, it, it was, a, it was a wake up call. So we were really excited about the fact that we've gotten clarity on which way we want to go and how we want to do this thing. And, you know, we're a little bit more direct and a little bit more rough around the edges in our podcast, but the message is, is about making men better. Right. It's just a way about awakening, a great awakening for men. Well, you know, I don't think there's any harm in casting the net wide. You know, because the thing is, everybody's influenced by something these days. So why not allow people to be influenced by three or four Christian guys who have the moral compass, which is sorely missing in this world? You know, you guys have direction because you allow God to lead first in your lives and it shows and, you know, you can convey biblical, solid biblical advice. You can convey solid life advice and compare, you know, when it didn't work for you when you were doing it your own way and when it did work for you when you started doing it God's way. You can illustrate and highlight all those things without beating people over the head with it, Uh you know. And I think that there is um, a large pocket of people that need to hear that messaging because as soon as you say certain words, they just want to shut you down and tune you out. Well, we we like to call them windows. Mm -hmm. I believe you have windows of opportunity to get your point across, and Mm -hmm. so we don't we don't drown our message. In Christianity, we 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 ground it in being practical. You know how do these things are going to affect us as men in everyday life, and understanding that the struggle is real and every single man is in it. And you know what we like to do is we talk about those struggles, and then we'll say, okay, this is how we deal with the struggles, and this is why we deal with them this way because we're believers. Mm-hmm. And we also want to give you know non-believers the opportunity to see that there are other ways, even if you're not a believer, that you can walk things out with integrity, morality, and character. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, one of the examples we gave was, you know, when you leave your house in the morning, who and what do you represent? Well, for, uh, for us, we walk out, we represent Christ first, our wives, our children. Well, for the man that's not a Christian that's out there, he doesn't, he doesn't think about Christ, but he does have a wife. He does have children. He has a father. He has a mother. He has a lineage that he's grown up in or, or, or you know, a, a legacy that's been left to him, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. And so what do you represent when you walk out? And how do you want to portray yourself in the world that you're living in? You know, and there's ways that you can do that as a man that are going to always be centered around truth and integrity mm-hmm. and morality, you know, and what we try to do is give just enough so that somebody might ask a question like, Hmm, that that makes sense. I mean, why do they think about it like that? You know, that's the kind of piece that I want in my life. Or so, 
you know, that's kind of finding that balance. And that was really probably the most uh, surprising thing for us is understanding, okay, this is what we are. This is what we aren't, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things we were talking about earlier, and I think this is true to what we're talking about tonight, is it's about focus. You know, I mean, what are you focus focusing on? What are you fixating on? Well, our focus is men. Our focus in, isn't just Christian men. Mm-hmm. You know, it isn't just fathers. It's men. And so how's that going to transcend? I mean, for instance, I know that uh, Fritz has always shared with me that your, when your oldest son listens to our podcast. Mm-hmm. Well, he's what, in his 20s? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's 26. Yeah, he doesn't have a wife yet. He doesn't have children, but he's a man. Right. And that's what we're, what we're looking at. Okay, how can we impress upon young men, older men, and even men that are into their seniors and so they can start asking some really tough questions? Mm-hmm. You know, like, what am I imparting on the people that are coming up behind me? You know? kind of a legacy am I leaving behind? What kind of a man do I want to be? And when people look at me, what I want, what do I want them to see in me and through me? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, so that's what, what we had to get our heads wrapped around. What is our focus? Our focus is men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's never too late to step up and be a man. Mm-hmm. You, you nope. always have the opportunity. And like John was saying, you're representing your family, you're representing your name, your lineage. Even if your lineage wasn't something that you're proud of, what are you going to do to change it? What are you going to do to redirect that course? So when you do have kids and you do have a son or even daughters that they're treated right or that your son treats someone else right, we want to make sure that they know that you're not stuck in the rut. You've got to step up. And I mean, with everything that's going on today, it is inevitable. I mean, it's, it's smack dab in the face that there's a lack of men and the ones who think they are being men, they have a distorted vision Mm -hmm. of what it is to be a man. So we're trying to help kind of walk that out and show the guys how we handle it, what we've done through our experience and what they can do, how to kind of put these things in play. I really, I'm a, I'm a bold to say that uh, a good majority of those men don't know what they don't know. Right. They don't know how to be men. No. You are so, so So lack of lack of fathers and lack of, uh, you know, their fathers. Well, that's it. And, it's not their fault. They were never no. taught. Yeah. That's, that's where the mentorship comes in. Mm-hmm. That's where, you know, if you are one of those guys who are walking that line and doing things the way they should be done, you need to share that. We can't do it by ourselves. We need to share that and we can't take it to the grave with us. It wasn't for, it's no. not for us to take to the grave. It's for us to share, to lift up, to I, mentor. And I can say the same thing about women too, because it's not the type of journey that you walk alone. You need that's women right. mentorship mm-hmm, and women mm-hmm. who will speak into your life. And that's women of all ages mm-hmm. um, because you have something to benefit from from women of all ages, whether they're a little girl or they're 96 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that there's so much beauty in those types of friendships and um, camaraderie and just so much you can glean um, from each other and make each other a little bit better, a little bit stronger, um, which it sounds like is basically the goal of your podcast. You know, it's like a brotherhood of men that are coming alongside of each other to try to help rise each other up and be better. um, And hopefully in that process, point them in the direction of Christ. You and you and I've had the conversation that, that guys talk to guys differently. Yeah. A man talks to his son differently than he would communicate with his mother, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. that's what the podcast is all about. And that's what I love. It's not about being politically correct, so to speak, mm-hmm. but it's about meeting those men where they're at, Christian or non-Christian, is to rub something in there and cause some friction well, he said, he said a couple of key things. It's your integrity and how you wanted to be looked at and then the legacy that you want to leave. And that's key. Well, the other thing that going back to what Tina was saying that I think that, and I don't want to skip over because it's so important. One of the grace, greatest empowerments of a man is a woman. Truth. Mm. And we can't lose sight of that. I mean, <laughs> I can tell you from personal experience, there have been decisions that I've had to make as a man that if I didn't have the support of my wife, I wouldn't have made them. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I wouldn't be where I'm at doing what I'm doing. And, 
you know, to the ladies that are listening, you play such a crucial role in how your man is going to mm-hmm. develop as a, as a, as a father and as a husband. You know, one of the things we talked about, uh, cause, and I was talking to my wife about this the other day. I said, you know, if I stood up on the stage and I was in a room full of women, and I said, okay, I want to talk about the ideal man. You've got a man that's, you know, you know, going to have integrity, morality. He's going to take care of you. He's going to provide for you. He's going to do all the things he's supposed to do, but you've got to relinquish all the control. How many of those women would be willing to do that? Mm-hmm. And see, if you want your husband to be a man, you've got to step back and allow him to be a man. Mm-hmm. And granted, I know that men make mistakes. We all do. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done some stupid things in my yeah. life and my wife's Captain stupid had to let here. me know. She doesn't rub it in my face, but, you know, but she's always supported me. But at the end of the day, if she doesn't step back and continue to allow me to be the husband and to be the leader of our family and she takes control of that. Well, what men do is they shrink. If you know anything about men, the first thing a man's going to do, if a woman relinquishes or, or, or takes away that power from a man, he's going to shrink or he's going to get overly aggressive or angry. Mm-hmm. And either way, it's not going to be good. Yeah, so it's not good. So I'm just saying to the ladies out there, you know, I know that men have made mistakes. I've made mistakes. Your husband may be one of them guys out there that's made a lot of mistakes. But if he's in a position right now where he's trying to do better and be better, you've got to step back and give him the opportunity to do that. And you can't continue to remind him of his past failures if you want him to be a future success. You know, Mm -hmm. I feel like I learned that one the hard way with my first marriage, you know, because you know, when you're young, you sort of, uh, you don't know a lot of these things. You Mm kind of learn them through the school of hard knocks as you go along. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, when you're young, you're always looking to be right and to stand by what's right. And sometimes what's right is not even what it's all about, you know, which is hard to get used to. But I think as you age and you get older, you start realizing It's more than just about being right. It's about supporting each other, um, showing each other a type of love that it kind of goes beyond words. You know, it is a level of um, closeness that two people can share because they have a bond of trust as well as love and and the willingness to surrender to each other, which is not an easy thing to do because yeah. we all want our own ways, but mm-hmm. it's the status of our country right now. Yeah. Everybody's but, right. But the husband, he, you know, to a certain extent, he has to earn it. Sure. He does have to earn it. But in the same regard, if you look at what the word tells us, it tells a man to love his wife as Christ loved the church, it tells a wife to respect her husband. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times we lose sight of that because Men need respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a reason why God didn't say wives love your husbands because he knows how a man is made and what we're made up of. You know, if you respect me, ultimately, you're going to love me anyway. But if you don't respect me, I don't feel love from you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, And one of the things that happens in a marriage or in a relationship between a husband and wife, if the wife doesn't respect the husband, you know, it's just a very dangerous place to go down because once that man feels like there's no respect, like I said, men, what they tend to do is they tend to shrink. They'll pull back or they get, you know, they get overly aggressive or they sometimes, unfortunately, some men that are ridiculous, they get violent. I mean, mm-hmm. this is, but respect is a huge thing for a man, just like love is a huge thing for a woman, right. you know? And so, you know, if a man, the last place a man needs to feel disrespected is at home, mm-hmm. you know, because, yes. You go into the world and you, there's going to be a level of disrespect there. You could get a level of disrespect at the workplace. And as a man, you can deal with those things because that's part of living. But when you come to the house, that should be a place uh, of, of refuge, a place of rest, a place of love and forgiveness and acceptance. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we have to work on that, you know, together as couples to make sure that that's that place. And, and, and I think Mike made a very good point. I mean, I tell guys all the time, I mean, don't come in and say, well, now that I get this, the light bulbs went off. You're going to go home and tell your wife now you're the leader of the family. If you haven't been leading the family for 11 years. And whatever you do, don't tell her John said that. <laughs> but I said, you know, you've got to don't tell her, show her. Right. right. You know, talk is cheap. You know, 
a woman wants to be shown. I mean, I'm not trying to speak for women, but through experience, a woman wants to be shown. She don't want to be told. I could tell you all day long I'm going to be a better man, but if I don't show it in my actions, it's just empty words and empty promises, right. which causes even more resentment and frustration. So I just tell guys, listen, don't talk about it. Do it. You know, there's a lot of times, you know, like I screw up, I'll say I'm starting to work out, you know, and then I fall off the wagon and I'm you get caught eating a donut. And it's like people <laughs> want to let you know, hey, I thought you were working out. <laughs> but you, same thing with like with, falling on that uh, bucket of crab or yeah, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, right. Truck yeah. of cr- crab, whatever it was. He <laughs> but if you go home and you say, I'm going to be the leader and then you don't do it. Well, you're going to be hearing a whole lot of what you ain't doing. You know, you come Mm -hmm. home puffing your chest about what you're going to do and you ain't Mm -hmm. doing it. So, you know, I think the bottom line to John is that we all come into a marriage or relationships as broken people because Mm -hmm. we're all broken. Every single one of us, we have damage in different areas and some people's damage is worse than others than maybe their partners. But, um, you know, that's the thing that I love about Jesus is that he works on all those areas and builds you back up and restores you um, into being whole in what you should be. And, you know, I've watched areas of my life and areas of my husband's life just get fully restored in ways that I could have never have imagined or pictured before. Truth. And it, it's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to witness as a couple because nobody can dispute that. Like no. I know for a fact the areas that he experienced brokenness in and deep, deep hurts and things like that. And then to watch it do a complete 360 because of the Lord, it's, it just takes your breath away, you know? Well, you know, it's funny. We, we live in a culture today where we say that women are under attack by the enemy, which they are. Mm-hmm. But there is nobody under greater attack in this country right now than fathers. The lack of the father is, if you look at our culture today and you look at the, the fatherlessness that is going on in this country, it's, 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 it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. And men, if you look at our culture today, just the way that men are portrayed, men are described, men are being displayed on TV, it's it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. I would have agreed with you like 10 years ago, John. Um, but right now, I feel like the true battle is over the children. I really do. I feel like this world is attacking our children so hard and has been for like the last five to seven years. And they are just basically reprogramming these children and I think the two go hand in hand. Yeah, though, I was going to say mean, that's, if, that's, if the you're father's right. not uh, uh, prevalent in the child's life, there's going to be issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. and that's that's what we see, see statistically when we do our studies and looking at certain aspects of what's going on with kids today. You're right; our children are under fire right now by the enemy in the world. But one of the greatest weapons that the enemy has used is the lack of the father to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at you know certain groups of people or certain cultures. I mean, there's some of them that have homes up to 73% that have no fathers at all, you know, 35%, 27%, you know, and when you start looking at the fatherlessness in this country, yeah, what's going to be the the after effect of that? If you don't have a father in the home, that's the figurehead that's raising, helping the mother raise the children, they're going to get raised by something and somebody else. Mm -hmm. And what happens in our culture is they get raised by the schools they get raised by the churches. They get raised by their friends. They get raised by other family, outside family influences. Everything but the family dynamic that God created, the husband and the wife, mm-hmm. the father and the mother. And what's happened is even worse, if you think about it, think about taking any children out of the equation. Look at the beating that women have taken because of it. I mean, mm. you know, firsthand being a single parent, mm-hmm. the beating that women have taken because of lack of the father. I mean, this is a huge epidemic and it's just a trickle down effect because men haven't stepped up to the plate and accepted their role that God has given them to lead the family. And because of that, women have had to try to lead the family. And we talked about this before in this podcast, Mm -hmm. but now they're stepping in overcompensation. They're trying to do certain things. They're trying to fit these roles that they're not, weren't created to fit. 
And then you get rebellious children. And we're already seeing the change. Yeah, you see the change. And, and, it, and it all stems because men have not stepped up to what God has called us to do as men. Mm-hmm. And that is to lead our families and, and, and the mentor, you know? Yeah. And it, it's, and it's, a, it's so unfair. I grew up in a, in a home with a single parent. Mm-hmm. My mom raised five kids in a, in a housing project on welfare, you know? And I saw the effects firsthand of what it did to me. And how it affected me and my brothers. You were brothers lucky enough sisters. to have an Archie, though. Yeah, and I, yeah, I had a mentor. And that's the other thing. I mean, we have a lack of mentorship in the world. So right. as far as men stepping up. And again, right. these little things. If I didn't have him, right. I had cousins and friends that didn't have Archie. And, and the majority of them are drug addicts, alcoholics, in and out of prison. I've had two friends in the last year and a half that have died from drug overdoses. I would mm-hmm. love for you to come tell that story sometime. I think that would be an inspiration to a lot of, a lot so, of people. But that's what we're trying to get out is the focus is on the on the man. Not saying that women aren't important and children aren't important. But if we step up to the plate and do what God's called us to do as husbands and fathers, you know, how many guys do you know that are even in the church? There are guys that are run off to the church and serve in every capacity and they're stepping over their wives and their children to go do it. Mm, right. You know, and you, they're trying to build walls for the kingdom and the walls of their homes are crumbling to the ground. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and the, ch- the kids are running around with resentment. Part of what we see in the culture today with the kids going back to what you're saying is, is they're falling away from the church. And mm-hmm. why are they falling away from the church? Because too many fathers aren't engaged. They, it's not good enough for dad. It ain't good enough for me. Mom's fighting with everything she's got. She's trying to get them there and making them go. Now mm-hmm. they're resentful of the mother for making them go to church because right. they didn't want to go. It's just a... Mm-hmm. It's crazy. You know, we start looking at it. It's just, and that's what we're trying to, we want to focus on men to get their minds wrapped around that. This is a great responsibility and blessing and gift that God has given us. I mean, think about Adam. He put him in the garden. He said, you rule over all of this. He named every animal. You know what I mean? And even in the end, he fell short because instead of stepping up when he should have, he let the enemy Mm -hmm. manipulate his wife, you Mm -hmm. know, while he was there, while he was standing right next to him. So, I mean, that's what we're trying to do is get guys woke to what's going on so that we can empower them or encourage them or to equip them, equip them with what they need to not be perfect, but just be aware, you know, but, but boys and young men and everything else, they need a man to do that. And they're not going to get it from a, a, a mother or a, well, they need a, a mother and a father. Right. They need them both, but because they're. The other part of it, too, I mean, there are things that women bring to the table that men don't bring to the table. And that's mm-hmm. why God made the family unit. That's why he made them one. A man and woman become one. A husband and a wife. Because he knows the importance of both people and what they're going to bring to that family dynamic. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just we live in a culture where it's almost fashionable to have children outside of wedlock, to not get married, and for women to raise children on their own. And, and, and it's like... These guys are getting a free pass. Yeah, I think what I think what Mikey was getting at is that uh, a young man slash boy cannot be validated by a woman. He can yeah. only be validated by another man. And if you don't have that father figure in the home, like you said before, drugs, alcohol, and keep on going down the list, they're going to seek that validation. Yeah, they're going to try to fill that void. Yeah, but the one thing that the mom brings that a father does not do a very good job, job at is called um, uh, nurturing. Correct. Men are not very good nurturers. And children need to be nurtured they as do. well as being groomed to be men. That's part of it because there's there's more the there's multiple facets to being a man. And, you know, if it's all hard, 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 masculine, 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 uh, that's not going to work either. You yeah. learn from your mom how to be compassionate and how to have empathy and, and to, you know, to show it's two love. two different validations, isn't it? Right. You know, yeah. that you get both. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why God brought them together as a husband and a wife, you know, and, you know, it, it's, if it wasn't important to have both of them, God wouldn't have made it that no. way. <laughs> you right. know what I mean, he would have said, just be a father and you just spring up boys from out from underneath rocks, you know, and, <laughs> and girls can spring up girls from underneath palm trees. I don't know, but you know what I mean? So, they need each other and it needs to be a, a cohesive, you know, family unit that comes together that raises a child up. 
You know, there's certain confidence, I'll be honest with you, that my son gets from his mother that he doesn't get from me and vice versa, you know. But as far as validation, Mike, you are correct. Boys need to be validated by men Mm -hmm. because there's a question that a boy has that needs to be answered by, it can only be answered by his father, his heavenly father, another godly man. Do I have what it takes? And do you love me? Yep. Am I a man? Yeah. You know? A woman, unfortunately, can't tell a boy, you're a man. That's like me telling my daughter, she's a woman. I have the idea to be a woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever, Dad. Yeah, she's like, Get yeah, okay. Woke. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so that's been our focus. And that's what we're just focused on, trying to help guys, you know? Mm-hmm. We, want, we want to help guys so they can be better for their wives, so they can be better for their children. And that way they can be better for their community and their church and the workplace, you know, mm-hmm. and so that we can equip them and empower them. Men to be, men today need so much to be encouraged and strengthened mm-hmm. because they've been weakened. Well, they're constantly being told what not to do. You can't mm-hmm. do that. You can't talk like that. You can't act like that. You need to step back. You need to sit down. Women are, you know, I'm just as much as this. I'm just as much as that. I can, I can pick that up just like you can pick that up. You're right. You know what? You can open the door. You can pick that up. But I want to do that to show my love for you. I want to do that to help you because our example about parking the car for him, yeah. you know, it's like, but dad, mom took me to the doctor. Mom, mom's the one that went inside with me. Mom's the one that did this. Well, yeah, dad was the one who dropped you off at the front door under the carport, drove in the pouring rain to park the car, walked through the storm so that you and your mother didn't have to. Now, granted, she could have, but as men, we're trying to be selfless is what we're trying to spread out there yeah. is that we are to be selfless. We are to put our wives, our children and others before ourselves. That's, so, a, that's when you finally learn to become a man is when you stop being selfish. That's the first sign. I told my son asked me that one day. He said, why do you know you're a man? I said, when you stop thinking about just you, when it's not about you anymore and it's about others, they come first and you're not selfish and you're selfless, you're now becoming a man because that's what a man's called to do. It's funny. He was talking about, you know, holding the door and everything. A friend of mine's wife told me a story uh, a few months back that her daughter, she's very independent, you know, and she said that one time they went to, she flew back from somewhere and her mom and her boyfriend went to go pick her up. Well, she's talking about how her daughter get off, gets off the plane. He's trying to grab her bags for her. She's like, no, I got it. I got it. Well, let me get you jacket. No, I got it. I got it. You know? So then, you know, she's grabbing something else and she's got all of her bags and she's got her jacket and her purse and everything. And, and, uh, she looks over to mom and says, Hey mom, can you, can you grab this jacket? She says, no, you got it. <laughs> Remember you got it. And she said, I pulled my daughter off to the side and I said to her, what you're doing is wrong because that man is trying to do something for you. And every time he asks to do something for you, you shut him down and guess what's going to happen. Sooner or later, he's going to quit asking. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to be standing there with, with the kids and the bags and everything else in your hands. And you're going to be wondering why you got this husband that ain't helping you when you've been telling him you got it the whole time. Mm-hmm. So Ray makes a valid point. You know, sometimes women need to sit back and allow us to do what men should be doing. Let us get the door for you. Let us carry your bag. Let us do these things, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, the, it's like the something as simple. Last night we're, we're having dinner and we're at Olive Garden and the, the guy is bringing the tea and it's taking too long and my he brought me a refill but didn't bring my wife a refill, you know? So I look over at Candy and I'm like, well, here, take, here, honey, take mine. She's like, no, no, no. I said, no, take mine. I'll, I'm, she said, she wouldn't take it. But, but the point is, is that are you willing to give up that glass of tea? You know, who comes first? You or her, mm-hmm. you know? And even though she didn't take it, what I've said to my wife in that moment is, is you're more important than me. And that validates my wife. Mm-hmm. And those are the little things that we think are so meaningless. that are just ridiculous that men, if we would just step back and learn, and believe me, I screwed up a lot. So I'm not trying to get any phrase here. <laughs> yeah. You know, these guys know better than anybody. But if we would take those moments to do something like that, it teaches our, not only my wife, but my two children that are young adults now. My daughter's going to be 18. My son's 19, get returned 20 this week. Mom comes first. 
I'm teaching my son that when you're married, it's about her. It ain't about you. Don't be drinking up your tea and doing this and that while your wife's thirsty. Don't, don't play that game. You know, you know, it teaches my daughter in that moment. I need in a relationship. My husband should treat me this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is how I should be treated the way that my father is treating my mother. And my son's learning this is how a man treats a woman. Mm-hmm. And see these little things that we've lost in the family dynamic because men have lost confidence or men have, have felt useless or maybe they feel insignificant or it doesn't matter anymore. It's those little things that mean the most because you're teaching your children, your wife, you're, you're validating all three people at the same time mm-hmm. over a glass of iced tea. <laughs> yeah. I have yeah. to say, though, I have noticed with like the millennial generation that there are uh, the men are a lot more involved with their families than, you know, the men of my generation uh, before. So, you know, there was that huge gap of, you know, single parents. And it feels like this generation, this millennial generation I can't speak for Gen X yet because I think they're still a little on the younger side, but they are very engaged in parenting. You know, you even see commercials with men doing for their children like mothers would do for their children. They are, um, it seems like it's a lot more 50 50 when it comes to being involved in the child's life, which I thought was a really good thing, a really positive thing and a move in the right direction. And, and you're absolutely right. The only issue that, that their generation is having is they don't have the value for marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll see where they're, they're okay. They're doing better in that aspect with men showing love and affection towards their children. But, but the dynamic, the family dynamic still suffers because they don't believe that you should ha- you have to get married. So they either live with the girlfriend or they don't live with the girlfriend and they co-parent or whatever. And still, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's better than nothing, but it's not the way as we know, sitting around this table, how God designed it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there's going to be some shortfalls and some situations that are going to come out of that that aren't going to be good because of that. Now, you know, matter of fact, they're saying, I mean, I was listen, it's a funny statistic, but like engagement rings, the sale of a diamond engagement rings has gone. That, that group of people, they don't get engaged like our group of people did before. You really? Because wow. marriage, marriage is not the thing for them. Wow. You know, so, you know, so it's, it's a different mindset. So, you know, the family dynamic, the, the, the issue that you have with that is that there's no commitment between mm. the mother and the father. Right. No com- yep. It's too easy to walk out the door mm-hmm. and say, well, you know what? I'll pick them up on the weekends or we'll share custody or whatever. At the end of the day, they still need that family dynamic, the mother and the father, you know? You bet. So that, that's where the, the suffering comes into that. But mm-hmm. I agree with you. You do see a lot more men, younger men, are more loving and affectionate than our father's 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 too, you know, mm-hmm. down that line. So. Yeah. Just seems like they're just more involved in general. Like yeah. they want to pick their kids up from school. They want to help change the diapers. You know, they do the laundry, they do the dishes. I, it, you know, and, and my father did those things, you know, when he was around, but most of the time he was out working. Um, but, Men of his generation typically did not do those things. That was sort of, you know, the culture of, you know, that's what the woman does and mm-hmm. she stays home and she doesn't work and, and things like that. But I bet you never had to uh, help yourself understand whether your father was your father or your friend, did you? No, you, um, my you, dad. Yeah, he was definitely a strong guy. He was your dad, right? Yeah. Yeah. In this generation, they want to be friends. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to parent when you're their friend. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, a lot of times, you know, you got to understand that there's, it's just like when we were using the word in our last podcast, we, we talked about what are we afraid of, right? Well, we talked about fearing the Lord, right? Fear is reverence and respect of God. You know, it's not necessarily being afraid of God, mm-hmm. but fearing the Lord, right? Well, when you're on an equal with somebody, doesn't work that way and when you make yourself an equal with your child and now you're friends and you're not his father or his parent then you get mixed messages and there's a reason why that the family dynamic is designed the way it is because 
It's teaching us, you know, where does God fall in that? God's, you know, Jesus, we say Jesus is our friend and Jesus is our counselor and all these other things, but God is the father. And we have to understand what the father is and who the father is. And there's a certain amount of reverence and respect that goes with that. It's like you're saying, like when you were a little girl, I'm sure you knew who your father was. Mm-hmm. He wasn't your buddy. He wasn't your, you know, your bestie. Mm-hmm. It's like I tell my kids all the time, we'll have time to be friends. Right now, I have to be your father. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're an adult and you've moved out and you've progressed and you've got your own life, we can be the best of friends. Right now, I got to be your father, you mm-hmm. know, and, and see, there has to be that, that line that's drawn for kids to understand that. Otherwise, it gets muddy. And that's why you see the behavior that we see in our culture today, because mm-hmm. too many kids yep. are friends with their parents and they haven't differentiated between, you know, who's in charge or who, who has the say. And in most cases, we were talking about in one of our podcasts because of technology, the, the kids are treated like they're smarter than the parents. Yeah. And the parents relinquish that because they don't understand that stuff. They go, well, they, uh, yeah, they must be smarter than me. I don't understand how to mm. work that thing. They're, you give these kids, I'm sure you see it. You go in public, you see two and three year olds using iPads. Mm-hmm. And some of the stuff they're doing on them, I couldn't do it. I don't even know how they're doing it, but they're doing it, right? Right. Because yeah. of the exposure. So, in families, you know, the kid is even on TV. We talk about that. The kid, the kid, and Fritz, Fritz likes to say the dog is always portrayed smarter than the father. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, he, the one that wants to rule the world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's amazing how, how quickly the culture has shifted over the last even 20 years. I, I mean, when I think about where I was 20 years ago, compared to how somebody that age would be now it's it's so different it's miles of difference it's like i I always use the word you know the the two words overcompensation because you know every generation you know we look back you said our father's father's father right they were hard they were you know they spent a lot of time they were well i'm not gonna treat my kids like that and then it was like, they, I'm not going to treat my kids like that. I'm not going to treat my kids like that. Well, now it's gone. Well, that's not, I'm not the dad. I'm the, I'm the best, I'm their best friend. Yeah. And so it's been overcompensation. And to some degree, we've made it worse because we have confused the child. It's not even the kid's fault. I mean, when the kid's being treated like he's an equal, he doesn't, he or she doesn't know any better. They just think, Hey, you know what? I tell my dad to go get me something to drink and he goes, gets it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we, we, we look, the looks in our faces because of the generation we grew up in, but that's not uncommon today. You go out in public, you see him. Mom, I want this. Give me that. Dad, give me that. Dad, dad, hand me that. Stop it. Dad, shut up. You know, it's like, wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's give and take with everything. Oh, absolutely. So, and like you said at the very beginning, it's all about balance. It's all about balance and focus and focus, but you've got to play. You got to balance it just right because you can be overbearing or you're going to be too soft. You got to, you got to find that happy medium. And the only way you're going to do that is by making mistakes. You're going to try. You're going to mess something up. Don't be afraid to apologize. If you screw something up, you know, you tell you, there's been times where I've, I could have swore my daughter did something and I'm just hounding her and hounding her and hounding her and come to find out she didn't do it. Well, I had to go back and apologize. That shows her that, Hey, I'm not perfect. And when I mess something up, I'm going to apologize for it. And that's going to teach her, you know, that's what you, that's what you're to do. Well, it, teachers that men, real men say, I'm sorry. Right. When you're wrong, you say you're sorry. Right. Regardless of whether you're a dad or husband or whatever, if you're wrong, you're wrong. That's it. Yeah. So true. Teaches them to acknowledge it too, not to stash it away. Mm-hmm. And what men don't realize a lot of times is it, it, it gives them more power because we think we, we lose power when we say, I'm sorry to our children, but it doesn't. It empowers us because our mm-hmm. kids, the kids are forgiving and loving and accepting anyway. But what you're selling to them is the value you see in them. When you bring, come to them and say, you know what? Dad's made a mistake. I said this and I thought that I'm sorry. I was, you know, I was, I was wrong for that. You know, I love you. You know, kids are going to be like, it's okay, dad, you know? But what it's going to teach that child is that when you're wrong, you say you're sorry. Even my dad, we, my, you know, kids will say, well, when I was growing up, even my dad, when I, when he screwed up, would say he was sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't my best friend or my buddy, but if he was wrong, he admitted he was wrong. And he asked for forgiveness. 
And that's what the word teaches us, you know, as of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. Well, man, fellas, thanks for stopping by. Well, thanks for having us. We love it. We didn't really have a set agenda for tonight, but no, I think what uh, needed to be said got said. Uh-huh. Somebody out there needed to it hear that. It usually does go that way. Yeah. It does. I want to uh, say hello to everybody on Mixler tonight. And uh, I can't see that far. But, uh, <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna be honest. I can't see that far. But um, there's a bunch on, and I just... Uh, he needs his glasses. Do you have your glasses? I don't know what I did. Hang on. He's, he's wheeling sorry. it up. Here, oh, try those. there you go. See if those work for you. They, right. they might not be strong enough, but then they might. There we go. Here he goes. Oh, there yeah. we go. Okay. Well, we got Donnie and we got, uh, what's the brother's name from, uh, where is he from? Indonesia? Who? Oh, yeah. Africa? Oh, Isaac. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Isaac. That's Welcome. a big leap from Indonesia oh, I, to I, Africa. I had, I, had, I had Indonesia on the brain. But, uh, He's been hanging out with Ray. All he talks about is, is Alaska. Is that, Alaska. That's true. I'm, I'm, I'm old and feeble. So. <laughs> so I'm rubbing off. So. I blame Ray. I blame Ray. We've got two off. other people. I can't see who you are, but welcome to the show, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you follow us on Mixler, you can, uh, you, I can see who you are and shout you out, and you can get notified every time that we go live. Correction, he can see who you are if he has his glasses on. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I've Ray, I've raised glasses on now. Hey. Ray, Ray all day. Uh, yeah. There we go. Man, what a great oh, podcast. Man. Thanks, guys, for stopping by. And that's the Battle Podcast. And you can listen to them on just about every listening platform. There is Spotify, iHeartRadio, Radio.com, Stitcher, Spreaker, Deezer, Amazon now, Amazon Music, and Audible. Yeah, they're even on Audible. Donnie says, totally agree with everything you guys are saying. Makes total sense to me. Donnie, thank you. We appreciate that. We appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. And uh, Donnie, please check out the uh, the Battle Podcast. Yeah, I just want to thank you guys again for having us in. It's, it's, it is such a joy to be here with you guys. You guys are awesome. Always uh, a pleasure. Yes, it is. And I say, guys, I do not want to exclude Tina. <laughs> Tina ties us together. <laughs> yeah, she's a glue. That's for sure. She is. <laughs> yeah, she acts like she's all intimidated with all this uh, testosterone in the room here. But yeah, she's, nah, she's she got can it. crack that whip, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scared. She's married to you, she man. Ain't she's, scared. <laughs> she's married to you. She can handle anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we want a testimony from you. We are God Stories Radio. Uh, if you don't have a testimony, we'll take even a stint in your day. Write it down. Send it in. Call in. Or uh, come by the studio. We'd love to have you. It's God Stories Radio Tina at gmail.com. If you'd like to come and sit in the studio, uh, it's God Stories Radio at gmail.com. If you just have any questions, prayer requests, or anything like that. And if you have time, give us a smash the like button on uh, Facebook. And we uh, post prayer requests and posit- positive things there. And uh, it's just uh, part of the GSR family. Everything, all GSR, all the time. So. Got anything, Mikey? GSR all the time. All right, Mikey. <laughs> uh, so, well, guys, we appreciate you hanging out with us, and uh, we love you each and every one of you, and we'll uh, look forward to uh, seeing you next week. And that round wraps it up for Session 258. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. And I'm Tina. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.